Robinson. Dustin Ware busted out of a big shooting slump last night. Found his range from behind the arc. Hit some critical shots for the Bulldogs. Here's Jurisic. The freshman from Montenegro loses the handle to belong to the Commodores. Now this lineup that's on the floor for Georgia was the best offensive lineup for the Bulldogs last night. You referenced Dustin Ware and how he got going in the second half. Hitting threes from beyond the arc really injected some life into their offense. And Seeley throws it down. Dante Williams went for the steal, misfired, and that left Azealy alone. Vandy scoring 73 and a half points a game. Georgia just at 61 a game. Williams throws it up through the foul. Time for our principal financial group edge to the game. And here's what the coaches think and Kara thinks will need to happen tonight. For Georgia, play to your instincts, and we're seeing that early on, just the free and loose cuts that they're making. That was a brilliant pass there by Nemi Jurisic. And then Jeffrey Taylor, I mean, this is a guy that struggled when Georgia went to Athens, when Vanderbilt went to Athens earlier this season. It was the John Jenkins show, and Jeffrey Taylor, sort of a barometer for how good Vanderbilt is, and look at how good the team is when Jeffrey Taylor scores 15 or more points. 31 and 9 when he goes 15 or more, just 12 and 12 when he's below that number. Taylor working on Caldwell Pope. Traveled with a basketball. Good defense from Contavious. A freshman working against a senior. And what makes Jeffrey Taylor such a hard guard is that, you know, he can he can stroke it from downtown. I mean, he can, he shoots over 45% from beyond the arc, so you have to get close to him. And that gives him the ability to get a head start and drive it and get past you. Jurisic, Nimi, can't get it to go. Here's Tinsley on the run. Off to Azili, lays it up and in. How about that move from the big fella? Andy's doubled up the Bulldogs. <laughs> oh, well, Pope might have got popped in the nose. Looks like he's might be bleeding a little bit out of the nose as he keeps checking to see if there is any blood. Jenkins, deep three, got it. Automatic, as automatic as they come, come in the country. Here goes Juricic. Tries to dump it into Williams. Taylor there for the takeaway. Here's Jenkins. Screen by Azili. Inside to Azili. Got it to go. And Vanderbilt is clicking. What a pass by John Jenkins. And that's what happens when this Vanderbilt offense gets clicking. There's not too many teams in the country that can slow them down. Here's Ware. He fires for three, no good. Long rebound into the hands of Odom. Jenkins back the other way, loose ball on the deck. Save, good play by Azili. scooped it right over to Odom. And a hold against Dante Williams. The most experienced group you will see, and a rarity to see so many seniors. Four in the starting lineup for this guy, and of course, Kevin Stallings off the bench, Steve Ching Gang with 123 games played, and Jenkins off the inbounds, left it a little bit short. But what a treat for a coach to have so much experience. You just don't see it in the college game much anymore. 
And Robinson flying to the basket, his first points. And I think that's why Vanderbilt was picked by a lot of people to, to win the conference or, or to be up in the top because of that experience, because of the career games played, career games played together, and certainly the talent. I mean, the talent level of Jenkins, Taylor, and Azili is, is high. Jenkins. Had a good screen from Chain Gang. It just misfired. John, one out of three to start the game behind the arc. Contavious Caldwell Pope. Taylor might have gotten a piece of that ball, but good job by Florius to keep it alive. And Florius is assist to Dustin Ware. And now Dustin Ware goes over a thousand points in his career. So Dustin Ware, now the 42nd member of the Georgia Thousand Point Club. Johnson fires off the back of the rim. Gene Gang. Second chance here for the Commodores. Taylor flies to the basket and a foul on Jurisic. Actually, they're going to call it on Contavious Caldwell Pope. That'll be his first. Jeffrey Taylor flying in there. KCP got a little bit of Taylor's forearm. And you talk about this Vanderbilt team and coming into the SEC tournament, high expectations for them with all the experience. And, you know, to me, the end of the floor, I'm most looking forward to see improvement on is the defensive end of the floor. I mean, has this team improved on the defensive end? Are they able to get stopped when they need to throughout this tournament? Goldborn just kicked it off his foot. Gibbs just looks, gives it that look like, what in the world are you doing? What's he, what he's doing is giving the basketball back to Georgia. Robinson comes off that high screen from Florvius. To the basket, through the foul. Well, attention golfers and club pros. Online registration is now open for the 2012 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to sign up and find a participating course near you. Gene Gang picks up his first foul. Robinson, an excellent free throw shooter at 80% on the year. First two games in the regular season went to the Commodores. They won by 11 in Nashville and had to rally to win by nine in Athens. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for John Jenkins going crazy from behind the arc in the second half, Mandy might not have pulled that one out. Jenkins went six of eight from behind the arc. Williams knocks it out of bounds. Great help there by Dante Williams because Festus Azili had great positioning. I mean, he had Florvius backed up underneath the basket. So Keedron will run the point. Parker off to his right. A couple of freshmen in the backcourt. Shot clock to seven. Lance Goldborn to the basket, a little too strong, and a whistle. And a foul on Festus Azili. That'll be his first. Third team foul against the Commodores. Vanderbilt, the second best shooting team in the league. The top team in terms of three-point percentage. Second and three-pointers made per game behind the Gators. Vanderbilt averages just shy of nine threes made per game. Floored up around ten. There's Sherrod Brantley. Robinson shot clock under ten seconds again. Brantley, offensive foul, moving screen with two, and Dante Williams with two. So the Georgia's 
starting post players having to watch. See if Festus Azili takes over. Trying to post up Festus now. Quickly double team. Goldborn on the run. Won't go. Good defense by the Dogs on that possession. Well, they're doubling Festus Azili hard on the catch. Randy started four out of five from the field. They have now missed six straight shots, and they haven't had a field goal since the 15-30 mark. Big screen by Jurisic, frees up Ware, nice teardrop. Dustin Ware has struggled all season long on the offensive end, but it seems like he's found something here at the SEC tournament. It was pivotal last night, and their upset win over Mississippi State, and off to a good start on the offensive end this evening. Tinsley inside the arc. Caldwell Pope with the rebound. Here's Dustin Ware. Caldwell Pope wide open for three. Parker the rebound. Jenkins backs up for two. Got it. How good is he? How do you guard that? How good is John Jenkins? The leading scorer in the SEC. Two seasons in a row. Jurisic, long three, that won't go. Here's Jenkins, shake and bake. He'd make Ricky Bobby proud. Wow. There's a reason he's led the league in scoring two years in a row. The follow by Florvius. His first points. Jenkins. That one's off the mark. Tapped around, and let's see who can come away with it. Brantley does. Caldwell Pope, offensive foul. John Jenkins showing you some of his skill. All he needs is a sliver of space. Nice little step back move. And then the ball screen, just a little ball fake. A little ball fake gets Caldwell Pope to make him think he's going to go over the screen, and that frees himself up for enough space. And when you start to feel good, I mean, John Jenkins has such a quick trigger. Just a jab, a shot fake. Anything is going to have your defender antsy and give you an opportunity to get a free look at the basket. Well, he just moved to second all time in three pointers in the conference. Just moved ahead of Chris Lofton, former Tennessee outstanding shooter. Still chasing down Shane Foster, however. Jenkins is just a junior. Foster had 134 threes. Single season record back in 2008. That is the standard, single season standard in the league. And the turnover. More options that can put the ball through the basket. They do. They, they're just a well-balanced offensive team that's going to be patient and take their time. And they have two guys in Jenkins and Taylor. Taylor hasn't gotten going yet. That can get going at a moment's notice. Had a look at it from behind the arc. Rebound to Robinson, up to Vincent Williams, who just checked in. Also checking in for the Bulldogs, John Cannon wearing number 41. 
He's on the floor because Thornton and Dante Williams saddle with two fouls, as does Caldwell Pope. So three of Georgia's starters out of the lineup. And Nemi Jurisic picks up his second field goal. Nemi Jurisic is a player for Mark Fox that has really elevated his game the last couple of weeks. Had that double-double last night and just gives them great versatility. Score inside and out. We saw that on that last play. How about Jurisic? Georgia's first double-double of the season from Nemi Jurisic. In the SEC tournament. 30 games into the season. Robinson with the shot clock. Inside 10. Off to Jurisic. Scoop pass to Cannon. Reverse layup won't go. Drew the contact with three seconds on the shot clock. Tinsley will pick up his first foul. John Cannon, who really is a, a fourth option in the post on the floor with Brantley, Robinson, Vincent Williams, and Jurisic. John Cannon hadn't seen a whole lot of action. Just 3.2 minutes a game. But a big body you can throw out there. You know what they say about those big guys, the seven feet, six ten, they're always going to show up that size. <laughs> well, he did tonight. And he's at the line. So Cannon converts the free throw. Freshman out of Burnsville, North Carolina. 6'10, 245. Look at Williams, Robinson, Brantley, Cannon, and Jurisic. It's a lineup you hadn't seen from the Dogs much, although Mark Fox now making some switches. He'll bring in another freshman, and Tim Dixon, number five, will check back into the game. Mark Fox going deep into the roster. Here's Johnson. Gene Gang backs up off the back of the rim. And Dixon, the freshman from Columbus, Georgia, with the rebound. Florvius underneath. Four points for John Florvius, who came into this one averaging less than two a game. Georgia's lead is one. Goldborn, that won't go. And a foul against Vanderbilt. And a makeshift group of guys for Mark Fox have taken the lead. Playing hard, competing on the defensive end, and that was a great push by Vincent Williams. You know, this team, Vincent Williams and Dustin Ware and Gerald Robinson Jr. have shared the point guard position, but Vincent Williams does a great job of pushing the basketball, finding openings. The 11th player for Georgia to see action just checked in, and Connor Nolte. Here's Robinson off to Vincent Williams. Florvius handles the awkward pass. Williams threw it right into the hands of Goldborn. Jenkins. by Gerald Robinson. Here goes Taylor to the basket. Left it short. He'll step to the free throw line. That foul on Florbius. That'll be his first. And here's a chance for Jeffrey Taylor to get into the scoring column. He's 0 for 3 from the field. Taylor in two games versus Georgia in the first game. At 16 points. In the second game, Taylor was held to 13 points, but struggled most of the afternoon. Jenkins and Johnson take a break. Tinsley and Parker back on the floor.
We are tied at 19, 444 to play in the opening half in this final quarter, final Friday game. Dave Neal alongside Carol Lawson and Shannon Spake. Our first game, Ole Miss took Tennessee to overtime and held on for the victory. They keep their NCAA hopes alive and perhaps shattered the Volunteers' dreams. And a foul against Vanderbilt. That'll go against Azili. That'll be his second. That is the sixth team foul. And here comes Rod Odom, and Azili will head to the bench. Ware out of the corner, no good. Goldborn, big rebound, off to Taylor. Taylor for three, not even close. Goldborn saves it into the scorer's table. Tonight so far, they've done a pretty good job on Jenkins and Taylor, who have combined to go three of 11 from the field. In the postseason, you have to be able to execute the scouting report, and the game plan is going to be different from game to game. And that's what Georgia was able to do last night. They sat in that 2-3 zone against Mississippi State, and tonight they're getting after it man-to-man -man versus Vanderbilt. Well, there's no question when Jenkins and Taylor are both in sync. Vanderbilt possesses one of the most dynamic duos in the entire country. Throw in a guy like Brad Tinsley, and you've got some real dangerous threats. Five for Tinsley. Three-point game. Approaching three minutes to go here in the opening half. Robinson, no good. Tinsley grabs the rebound. Brad Tinsley. Averaging about three rebounds a game. Odom wide open for three. Even he squints on that one. But a couple of guys that have knocked down a lot of shots for Vanderbilt over the years. Jenkins and Taylor struggling a little bit. You know, Jeffrey Taylor's, you know, an interesting player because he's got so much talent, but there are times and there are stretches where he kind of goes unnoticed. And he, I don't want to say takes plays off, but it is not an impact on the offensive end as he could be. The skill set that he has, the size, the versatility. Tinsley showing you a little versatility. To the basket, little ball fake, scoop shot off the window. He scored five straight and had seven in the game. We showed that graphic earlier and how successful Vanderbilt is as a team when Jeffrey Taylor is impactful on the offensive end. And a guy that's been impactful on the offensive end, the last couple possessions for Vanderbilt has been Brad Tinsley. He hits the three, now he's got the mismatch. He's got better foot speed than Nemi Jurisic, and he takes it to the glass. Great finish, and there's somebody that's stepping up as a senior point guard. And what does that mean in the big picture? In terms of who might be inching closer to the NCAA tournament and who might be inching further away. Dari, Joe, Barry will have all that for you coming up on the C Spire Halftime Report. I know Joe Lenardi's just crunching numbers right now, but I'd be interested to see where Ole Miss fits into the picture now after their win today as Cannon, little baseline jumper. That breaks a five-minute scoring drought for the Bulldogs. I think Ole Miss needs to win one more game to, to really be in that bubble picture and that last four in. Brantley on the fast break. Boy, Georgia looking a little bit like Vanderbilt here the last couple of possessions.
Taylor shoots an air ball. Thought he was fouled. John Cannon, a player for Mark Fox that normally doesn't get a lot of run, but he's getting some tonight. A great push here by Georgia. Being opportunistic in transition off a missed shot. They are very aggressive and have guards that can be explosive on the break. How about Georgia's bench? 15 of their 23 points. Three starters hit with two fouls early. Contavious Caldwell Pope, Marcus Thornton, and Dante Williams all on the bench. Georgia with a chance to take a lead. Shot clock down to two. Here's Cannon, ball fake. And a big collision. Odom crashes to the floor. Oh, is it good to be young. <laughs> that looked awful. And probably scared the daylights out of Odom. Ooh. And the young man pops up. Not a two-shot foul, one and one for Cannon. The big fella, 6'10", 245 from North Carolina. Toe in the line here in the SEC tournament. Five points tonight for Mr. Cannon. Make it six. Vanderbilt will hold for the perhaps the final shot. Goldborn pulls up, too strong, rebound to Brantley, and how about this, folks? The bench came in and not didn't just hold the fort down. I mean, they took the lead here in the first and in, in, to the end of the first half. Georgia, last 10 points they scored came from the bench as both teams open up with their original starters. Jurisic working on Goldborn. The tap from Williams won't go. Goldborn the rebound. Tinsley, hot hand in the first half, continues in the second. You can count it. Third foul on Marcus Thornton, who played all of one minute in the first half. Just a terrific hesitation move and the change of speed. It doesn't matter how quick you are. It matters can you change speeds. And he just gets Marcus Thornton off balance. And Marcus Thornton barely getting any run. He's not even breaking a sweat tonight. He's going to have to go back to the bench. Marcus had some knee issues. Looks like he's favoring one of those legs. Had arthroscopic knee surgery late December, early January. Missed five games because of that. Marcus Thornton looks like he'll go right back in, check in, despite picking up his third foul. Back at the February 19th game when Georgia led by one at the break, but then Vandy opened up a 10-point lead in the second half behind John Jenkins and his three-point shooting. Juricic, no look pass into Dante Williams who can't handle it. Tinsley to the basket again. Keep feeding the monster, Brad Tinsley. He's got a dozen points to lead everybody. Caldwell Pope, baseline jumper, got it. The freshman. Out of Greenville, Georgia. Averaging 13 and a half a game with his first field goal. Azili double team, and you can count it. The big man just out muscled the Bulldogs in the post. That's going to be Dante Williams' third foul. 
So both Thornton and Williams pick up th three fouls early. And I thought Azealy got fouled even before they blew the whistle, but they allowed it to play on. I mean, Dante Williams had one arm wrapped around him as he was posting up. Great job by Azealy just to finish through the contact. You can find a big guy that can finish through the contact. That's a, that's a commodity to have in the college game. Well, Azealy can't convert the three-point play, but he's hit all four of his shots from the field as Vanderbilt's lead is four again. Caldwell Pope inside to Thornton. He spins right into Taylor. Throws it up, draws the foul, and Thornton heads to the free throw line. Boy, that painted area tonight between the Ole Miss-Tennessee game and this one, not for the faint of heart. Taylor picks up his first. Well, interesting move by Mark Fox here. He's going to keep Dante Williams in the game with three fouls. He's going to put Marcus Thornton back into the game. Looks like Williams is ready to check out here for Florvius, but clearly having size along the front line is something that is important for Georgia, particularly on the defensive end. They have to have guys that are going to be able to bang on the glass. Goldborn with that rebound off to Tinsley. Four rebounds for Lance. Tinsley with a dozen points. He's five out of six from the field. Gets it off to Jeffrey Taylor, who was 0 for 5 with one point. Jenkins has been quiet after a quick start to this game. Jenkins has eight. Keeps it alive and fires. That's a two and a toe on the line, but buries it. How quick was that catch and fire? I, I mean, that was split second quick. It looked like Gerald Robinson Jr. was going to take the pass the other way, and John Jenkins not only snares the basketball, it goes up and hits, knocks down a shot. Here's Ware, guarded by Tinsley. Have to back it out. Shot clock hits 13. Tough shot. Florvius hit the bottom of the rim. Commodore's on the run. Jenkins knocked out of bounds. Good defense by Caldwell Pope. I mean, it looks like it's a turnover, and he barely catches it. How quickly he gets lined up. It's just remarkable. It's remarkable the efficiency with which John Jenkins shoots, and a lot of times the degree of difficulty that he just makes look easy. You know, you're our, uh, a shooter by trade. I know there are other aspects to your game, but what about his? As Goldborn rocks the rim, what is it about Jenkins' shot that you like? I mean, what makes him such a good shooter? It's the same thing every time. It's the same thing every time, and that seems like a simple thing, but anytime he shoots it, whether he's just grabbing it and catching it there, whether it's a step back that he had in the first half, it's the same motion every single time. The same depth of where he gets, where he dips the ball, the same follow through. I mean, that's just thousands and thousands and thousands of shots. And that's what makes you be able to appreciate it, how long it takes to be able to shoot with that type of efficiency. By the way, that foul on Thornton a moment ago, that is number four on Marcus. Mark Fox having a little chat with John Florvius, and he's probably blaming Florvius for Thornton's fourth foul. That's a lot of hours in Mem Jim for John Jenkins to get that stroke like that. Well, he's the first one to practice, last one to leave. There's a reason that he shoots such a high percentage. Robinson fall away, won't go. Long rebound to Taylor. Taylor does have one point, but no field goals. Very similar to the second game with Georgia in Athens for Jeffrey Taylor. Goldborn, that time he's able to flush it home. And Vanderbilt's lead is nine. They have taken a one-point deficit and turned it into a nine-point lead. On up to the rim. Took a one-point deficit at the break, and now lead it by nine. Contavious Caldwell Pope, Georgia's leading scorer, sitting on two, or one for four from the floor. I should say second leading scorer, Joel Robinson at 14 points a game. And Jurisic knocks down the field goal. Give him six.
Gersich nearly had the steal. Azili bumps right into John Cannon, the first half hero for the Bulldogs. Cannon hustling down the floor to set up shop. How about Cannon? Do you think he, when he woke up today, would, thought he'd be banging with Festus Azili in the painted area? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Cannon's played a total of 14 games on the year, averaging about three minutes per game in those contests. At six in the first half. Here's Ware inside. Bounce pass to Jurisic. It'll belong to Georgia, but only four seconds on the shot clock. When we come back, back in a moment. Who wants to cut into this lead? Dustin Ware had a big game last night. Dustin struggling a little bit here tonight. Here's Caldwell Pope with the rebound. Dustin two of six. You can make it three of seven as he buries the three, and he now has eight. Kensley working on Williams. Knocked out of bounds by Jurisic. Vanderbilt will have the basketball. Ole Miss awaits the winner of this one in the second semifinal tomorrow. It'll all get started with Kentucky and Florida at 1 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Brad Nestler, Jimmy Dykes will continue the coverage along with Shannon Spake. Caldwell Pope shakes free on the baseline. A little too strong. Here comes Tinsley. Off to Jenkins, fires for three, got it. Didn't even touch iron. As pure as a driven snow. I mean, Jenkins is just unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable as a shooter. And great job by Tinsley to find him, how he hesitated. He waited for Jenkins to get into scoring territory right behind that three-point line. Gave him a great pass. Where? Tried to answer. Not all that trip. And a foul on Jurisic. Hesitates a little bit, even screens off Dustin Ware. Brad Tinsley does, and John Jenkins, you know, when perfect form, look at that. Squared up to the basket. I don't I mean, want to brag, very similar to what I do at Church Road. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I leave out that. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, um, my shot's a toe raiser. His shot, he gets up in the air. This fire's there. <laughs> oh, I'll bring you to one of my games. <laughs> Quite entertaining. Jurisic threw some contact. Foul on Tinsley. Jurisic to the free throw line as you look at the numbers between the starters and the bench. And the reason Georgia hanging around, only down seven at this point, is because of that bench production. In the first half alone, Mark Fox used 12 different Georgia players. And that guy, John Cannon, led the team in scoring at the break with six. Marcus Thornton has four fouls. Dante Williams has three. Gerald Robinson in this game. Just three points. He had back-to-back 23-point -back games in the regular season against South Carolina, then last night against Mississippi State. Let's see right here if Jeffrey Taylor will assert himself on the offensive end. Jenkins is on the bench. It's been a slow night for him on the offensive end. Jurisic with a big block on Azili. Goldborn left wide open for three. Got it. Lance Goldborn. His 17th three of the season came at a great time for the Commodores. Lead back to nine. Vanderbilt matching their biggest lead of the game. Jurisic threw it. Right over the head of a cutting Robinson. 
11.50. You mentioned that Ole Miss Vandy game. Jeffrey Taylor, 23 points in the first half of that game. Nice cut. Deidre Johnson on the assist from Team Gang. Yeah, well, Jeffrey Taylor going to have to work hard if he wants to hit that number. He's got 1.0 for 5. I don't think he's taking a shot here in the second half. Shot clock at five. Vincent Williams. Thornton back on the floor with those four fouls, and it's not been a good night for Vincent Williams. Couple of turnovers. During that last time out, Festus Azili trying to get stretched out a little bit. Almost looks like he's having some back issues. He has been twisted like a pretzel down on that post a few times. You mentioned earlier that he just didn't look real comfortable in a few possessions down in the post, and I wonder if it has something to do with that back. George has been doubling Festus Azili hard on the catch. And he has struggled with it. Robinson. Gerald sitting on three points, only three field goal attempts. Nice pass into Thornton. He'll step to the free throw line. I know Vanderbilt fouled there, but you have to certainly credit their defense. It's something they worked on, they wanted to improve. Coming into postseason play, coming into the SEC tournament, to only have given up 33 points, and we're coming up on 30 minutes now. They've worked really hard to limit Georgia's opportunities on the offensive end. Ah. How about a 52% foul shooter? Knocking down the first one, clean and crisp for Marcus Thornton. His first point tonight, but he hasn't played a whole lot of minutes. Must be something in the air tonight. There were some 42% free throw shooters knocking them in in our first game. Ole Miss, the worst free throw shooting team in the conference, shot almost 70% at the line, and that was the reason they were able to take down Tennessee. They shoot their normal percentage. We don't even go to overtime. Goldborn, nice ball fake. Thornton had to be careful with those four fouls, and Goldborn knew it. Uh, he's been very active, Lance Goldborn. Goldborn. And you got to understand when you're checking him, I mean, he gets it at the top of the key. He loves to put his head down, drive hard right to the basket. Timeout taken by the Bulldogs. Three Commodores in double figures. Nobody for the Bulldogs has reached that point yet. Where? Just lost the handle. Johnson, solid bounce pass to Taylor, who was held on the way to the basket. And they will say no shot, so. He threaded the needle. Wow. A foul on Dante Williams, number four on him. Watch the spacing for Vanderbilt offensively. And when you're guarding their perimeter players, you must shade toward them, even when you're on help side, because of their prowess from beyond the arc. Taylor left it short. Brantley pulls back. Gang. And the Commodores will have another chance. Tinsley with a dozen. Swings it to Goldborn. Another three on the way for Lance. Not going to happen. And Taylor with his first field goal of the game gives Vanderbilt their largest lead of the night at 13. Mark Fox wants a timeout. Nine players from Georgia have scored, but nobody has scored more than eight. Georgia, you see those last few trips. Now that's 
0 for 5 from the field with three turnovers. Johnson crashing to the floor over the Vanderbilt cheerleaders. Everybody seems to be all right. So Kevin Stallings must have whipped out one of those voodoo dolls you can get down on Bourbon Street at halftime. And Taylor tries to throw it ahead. I mean, but, but that play in itself is indicative of their intensity on the defensive end. I mean, Taylor stepping into the passing lanes. No free cuts. Just another turnover. Mark Fox walking down that bench trying to find somebody to create some offense. Don't know he'll find anybody. Taylor, big hop step. And a foul on the inside. See who that goes against. That'll go against Dante Williams, and that'll be... That their guards attacked and that they were proficient on the offensive end. They were that last night in their upset win against Mississippi State. And Vanderbilt has done a really good job defensively to keep those guards out of the paint. Jenkins misses. Cannon, the rebound. Even when he misses, it looks good. <laughs> Robinson high off the window and a whistle underneath against the Commodores on that loose ball. That'll go against Jenkins. That'll be his first. Now this has been a, if you follow Georgia at all this year, this game has been just classic Georgia, if you will, this season. Where? Off the front of the iron is Ely with the rebound. That'll be his fourth. 